Hello, and welcome to the video version of the Left of Greg podcast. I'm Brian Marin, the host and creator of the show. As always, I will be joined by human behavior expert, Mr. Greg Williams, who the show is affectionately named after. On the show, we discuss different topics through the lenses of what we call human behavior pattern recognition and analysis. If you'd like to find out more about what that is, please check the links in the episode details and go to our website to learn more. Please don't forget to follow us on social media. The links are also in the episode details and hit the like and subscribe button to help support our work. Thanks for tuning in and we hope you enjoy the show. Honey, should be, uh, we are in. Should be coming live. So we're, we're, we are live. We are live. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for tuning in. For those of you joining us live, hello. For those of you just listening into the audio, you can find the link in the episode details and you can join us live when we hop here on Facebook Live. But I want to jump right into this topic today. We've got a few things we're going over and the overall arching theme would be what we call home field advantage or what we're going to get into is kind of a geographic profile. But two cases we're going to jump into. One recently in Nashville, where uh, someone was shot and killed uh, attempting a what they called a was it a fake um, a fake robbery or prank a robbery prank. excuse yeah. me for for YouTube live that they wanted to go on and do um, so we're going to discuss that case and uh, the recent case uh, that happened in uh, Florida where the two FBI agents were unfortunately were killed uh, executing a, an arrest warrant on someone so. Those two uh, seemingly unrelated topics, uh, in fact, I believe are somewhat related in terms of how these things escalate into violence and how it happens. And one of the ways they do is um, kind of understanding a geographic profile and how, what we consider to be almost our home turf, right? So I always go back to, you know, we're, we're one of the things we always see when we're, we're teaching courses, Greg, and, and that, you know, we go in there, we start off cold start day one, boom, get going. And then everyone comes back day two and everyone sits in the exact same seat they were in in the first day, regardless of if, unless, unless we physically had to move them or reassign them, they always sit in the same seat. And that's, there's, there's a reason for this, right? It's no different at, 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 we're out to dinner with our families and then someone bumps into us or, or there's a loud party or another table, a few tables over, and we automatically start getting pissed and we feel like, Hey, we're being almost attacked here. So, yeah. so I kind of want to start there, Greg. So explain one, why that is, why that happens and what this has to do. And we'll get into what this has to do with the specific cases then. So let's, let's do science light, L-I-T-E, for those people that like to go and do their own research. So uh, Brian and I uh, just flew back from D.C. And so when we got to the airport parking lot for the rental sled, the amazing thing is that they channel you in, direct you to where you need to park. But if you look at the greater parking lot at large, people always want to get closest to an entrance, okay? But if they see a car, you'll see that they autonomically move over two or three cars where they're going to park their car. And then all of a sudden, it looks like a, you know, a, a seventh grade class in Mississippi with the gaps in their teeth. You know how kids lose their teeth and have to get their adult teeth. Everybody's smiling through these gaps in the parking lot. And then we were in the airport and I had a, you know, my 15 minute uh, bathroom breaks, my bio breaks, uh, go into the urinals. And the funny thing was even pre COVID, what do you see? You see the people take the first urinal, then the third, then the seventh, right? The idea is that we don't like bunching up. We like to have our own terrain. We actually sometimes will turn chairs or put our, our suitcase. We saw that at the airport, Brian, where people would put the suitcase in front of them to deflect them and then right. their carry on bag next to them to create a little fort. Well, we're insecure, uh, vulnerable little snowflakes. And what we like to do is we like to have this area and we adopt it and think it's ours. Now we go to a bar we've never been to. We go to a Chili's in a different town. And what do we do? We sit down right away and that table turns into our geographic anchor point. You know, the only person that we're gonna allow in is, is the waitress and then we're dismissive and shoo them away sometimes, right. don't we? Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. The, you know, and then it, heaven forbid if somebody comes by to take your photo or sell you a rose or uh, ask, hey, haven't I seen you on that Love to Greg podcast? We get that all the time, folks, but only in Macedonia. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, are we or are we not fiercely protective of that? You know, right. even, even at the bar, Brian, you, know, you sit at the bar and somebody comes up and all they want to do is sit down and you're like, hey, that seat's taken. And we would never talk like that to anybody in public, right? But when we get into a situation where there's a geographic uh, essential and a proxemic essential to us, then, then we go wild. Our, our brain waves start taking over and we think that we're Lord of that little area. 
Yeah, no, that, that and that, that's a good point. So we kind of immediately take that ownership and it becomes ours. Like I always give the classroom example because then you come back and if you all sit in someone's seat or tell someone to sit in that person's seat and they'll come back and be like, hey, you're sitting in my seat. It's like, dude, this wasn't a sign. This isn't even your seat. This isn't your room. This isn't anything. But we immediately take ownership of that. And so so kind of jumping into the to the, to the first case, um, mm -hmm. you know, in Nashville, where I guess that's a thing to do prank um, prank robberies where you I've never heard really, those two words together. Yeah, I, before I, I, you said that what, it, what it sounds like to me is like, you're doing like, you're, 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 you're doing the prank robbery, but you're really robbing the person. And that way, if you get caught, you're like, Oh no, I'm filming it for YouTube. Here's your money well, back. You I don't know. Yeah. Like I, I, that, that's the first thing that popped in my mind, but this kid came up with a knife, uh, in this trampoline park in Nashville. And the guy was with, there was another guy, young guy there with some friends that were hanging out and he comes up with a knife to rob him. Doesn't know he ends up, um, he carrying concealed weapon, pulls him out, kills the guy, uh, right then and there. And then it, then through the immediate investigation found out that this guy was trying to prank it was this whole big thing but the guy who pulled the trigger didn't know that uh, he wasn't in on the prank uh, yeah. so 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 that there's there's that issue right there so i i think we're going wait how does this immediately turn into that I mean, how does it escalate into a, a homicide like that right or, yeah. or self-defense whatever it's going to be but the idea is how does that turn into it now in this case there was a weapon involved and he thought he was being robbed so that's a little bit different but but immediately in that area i would say even if you walked up to that guy and said something or did something or spilled something they immediately take ownership of the area you're hanging out in, in this public space. Right. Yep. And, yep. and so that almost becomes an attack on them and the group and their whole identity. And so that's how these things initially can, can kind of escalate. Does that, does that sort of make sense? Yeah. yeah. And Brian, you know, we believe in eight psychological stances and, and we're not going to go into that on this broad case, but I'll tell you one is surprise. And, and, and in the element of surprise, I want you to add now, um, a bunch of people being in your house or your apartment, it's your birthday, and unbeknownst to you, it's going to be a surprise, and you walk in and they scream Yahtzee, yeah. okay? I've never read an article, and even from Jakarta, you know, where that guy pulled out his legally, you know, owned weapon and started spraying the room uh, with gunfire, okay? Why? Because what happens is we have certain file folders, certain mental models for what's likely to occur in our lives, and the mental model created for robbery isn't a joke. Kidnapping is not a joke. So when we see that and when we uh, see the situation where you're out with friends in a public place, mm -hmm. and now that public place has become a, a mobile, a roving geographic anchor point for your friends and your behavior, and now somebody known or unknown to you comes up with a knife and gets in your grill, Brian, how can you not escalate violence at that point? A common human in, in a rational, uh, sane, sober, rational state is going to look at that and say, oh my God, I'm, I'm trying to be stabbed. And now let's not get into the de-escalation component. If you're trained, you're going to de-escalate, you're going to create distance, you're going to do a bunch of other stuff, but the outcome is likely still going to be an escalation of deadly force if the person's moving on you with an edge weapon. And especially if they were as close as these distances are to film. And you know what we always say, Brian, if you can film it, you can stop it. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I can't believe right. that nobody else noticed it. So here you had the element of surprise. You had a geographic anchor point. You had somebody that wasn't welcome into your friendship circle. So defenses come up. And defenses mean a higher elevated state of likely potential violence. Okay, so the... This can happen in a number of different so just basic social situations, right? Yeah. That's why I feel yeah. it. And anytime I'm in an area for a while, this now becomes my area, whether that it's, um, you know, you, my, my car, you know, where I'm sitting at the table or where I'm in line with someone or my family, whatever the situation is, we, we become very territorial, very quick. Yep. And so that's part of the reason. Now, the reason I kind of wanted to start with this um, uh, specific case uh, out of Nashville with this because it, it, it gets, goes to show you that this can happen at any point in any situation, right? So this is yeah. outside of the home. Meaning, I mean, this is even when you're just literally standing in line somewhere at the movie theater, you become territorial about your space and where you're at and where you should be, right? So, so that's that's outside of where your actual lives. So now I change that location to inside of your home, your personal home, your personal space. Okay, so so that right there, now knowing how you would act out in public in some area is that going to, I would say that was going to, you're going to have an increase in that feeling of protection and want of an ownership when you're in your actual home. And that's why we brought up the case of the, uh, the, 
the uh, FBI agents who were recently killed serving that warrant on that guy down in Florida for child pornography and all this, you know, nasty shit. But the idea was he's now in his home. Now, this is not the first time and I'm, and I'm not trying to Monday morning quarterback it, you know, but, but we've been part of AARs and we were doing those AARs because people died uh, on our team. And, and yep. so, so yeah, we, we, it's really hard to talk about it, but I've had to do it before in the past. And if you don't take away the proper lessons learned, it's going to continue to happen in the future. We see this time and time again, how many times is someone, whether federal, state, local law enforcement shot, uh, executing or serving some type of warrant. And many of the times when you go into it, you can sit here and go, well, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Oh, this guy, yeah, we, we knew it was going to happen or we, we thought he would likely increase violence or we knew he had a gun. It's like, we're sitting here going, well, why did you go into the house then, right? That's their home. They're going to protect it. Why, why even set the stage there? And that's is where we take the point of de-escalation from is not just at the incident when you're, when you're knocking on the door and the guy's shooting back at you. It's, it's no, why, why did you go in there in the first place? So that's kind of my yeah, big so, question with all these two, Greg. I, I would ask you, let's split it into to three parts so it's uh, uh, digestible chunks. I would warn everybody, do your homework and grab a yellow pad right quick unless you're driving. And then, you know, uh, to have your passenger uh, and you just yell out clues. Uh, but uh, one, uh, legality of the warrants, and that's a very simple one to do. Uh, two, what happened at the front door and, and a little bit of a talk about the perpetrator. And then number three, which I'd like to start with is uh, your example and use a quick jungle example. So if everybody listening imagines uh, a lion uh, and a lion has a cave, you know, and he likes to, to lay on the rocks in the sun, but then he retreats to his cave, that's his little safe place. Um, the lion also has a series of observation posts, trees that he likes to lay in where he looks for potential meals and uh, he can't get him wrong. Uh, he's a big lumbering lummox. Uh, so, you know, he's uh, got to eat and uh, he doesn't want to lose and he doesn't want to get kicked in the jaw and lose a tooth. Uh, so he's very protective about the targets. Uh, uh, he chooses limp, lame, lazy, slow targets, not big fighting targets. And then he moves from the observation post along a natural line of drift down to the water pond where there's everything from frogs and beavers and antelope and unicorns and whatever else that he could hunt. So we, if we want to kill the lion, we can choose to kill him at his cave. We can choose to kill him on the road uh, to his, to his uh, surveillance points, his observation post, or we can choose to kill him on the road to the watering hole, uh, or we can choose to kill him uh, along the route when he's headed home. Because when you're fat and you're full and you're off work and you're heading for home, what, what, what does that guy all state stand tell us? Uh, within a couple of miles of our home, we're the most dangerous because we mentally checked out. It's much easier catching a person that's going to pick up their syphilis medicine at the Walgreens when they come out through the front door and yell in Yahtzee. It's safer for the coppers. It's safer for the lion. It's safer for the general public. But Brian, if you try to go into that cave, um, you're going to lose some of them and you're going to lose some of you. And nobody's going to walk out of that cave without a scratch if you're catching my meaning. No, I, and I think I think that's the part. And I know a, a lot of times what happens in these is, um, especially when you're talking about, you know, law enforcement targeting inside that cave, right? And we've seen it before in the past, how it can escalate into really, really bad. So I, it's in the news all the time. How many times, yep. oh, executing a warrant, this happens. Executing a warrant, this happens. Well, that that that's a problem right there, because like you just said, you can pick the time and place. So one of the th reasons that, that this occurs is that, okay, we have an arrest warrant for you. So Greg, I've got an arrest warrant for you. Uh, judge signed off on it. Yeah, we're good. We, we we're, you know, we a lot of evidence here to show that you committed this crime. So now that I have an arrest warrant for you, I can arrest you wherever I see you, correct? That's, I can I can go and get you. Absolutely correct. Day so, or night. You doesn't know, matter. I cold, I cold hot does not matter. Depending so. on resources, we can sit on you for a while, whatever we've got, we can do this. But here's the thing. Um, if I don't have enough evidence to obtain a search warrant for your home, right? I can't, I can still well, I might not be able to search your home with a warrant, but I can, if I know, if I have an arrest warrant for you and you're inside your home, I can go arrest you inside your home and then I can search incident to arrest, right? I yep. can then search your home because I arrested you in said home. And legally, I mean, there's a case that comes up about every 10 years or so sort of challenging it. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't go anywhere because it said, no, you can do this. Now, 
a while back, it kind of narrowed it, the search parameters a little bit. Okay, certain circumstances, the vehicle is allowed to be searched, others there isn't. But if you're in your home, right? So it's it's clear, I can now search that area. So is that what happens in a lot of these situations? And is that what gets the, is that the reason why they keep going, hey, let's go inside the home and get them? Yeah, yeah. So, so you're spot on one. We said, we're going to talk about the three things. So we talked about the line and that's, let's talk about the legal and, and let's talk about it very briefly, no pun intended. So uh, it's so easy to get an arrest warrant and to get a search warrant and to get a judge wear off on them. All you have to do is create an affidavit. You create the affidavit and say, I saw this, I did this, here's the probable cause. And then you take it to a, a, the district attorney. Many times you have to go through the prosecuting attorney or the district attorney or an ADA. Yeah, they right. review you it say, to make yeah. sure that the content and that the legal, legal precedent is correct. Then you go to a judge, the judge reads it, asks you to raise your right hand. And then you swear that all the things you know are, are true to the best of your belief and you've got it. So there's no reason in this day and age that if you have evidence that's likely to be in that home, that you should do a search incident to a lawful arrest, which is what you're talking about, that now I have the arrest warrant, I see the guy, I see him in his house, I go up, knock on the door, he answers the door, I go Yahtzee, and then everything that's in his likely span of control, I can search. So Brian, that's kind of like fishing. And sometimes fishing, you, you know, you do good. And sometimes fishing, I saw Jaws, uh, they eat Quint. Uh, you, you get what I'm trying to say? So the idea is, if you're not going to follow the law, reap the whirlwind. So you and I both know that U.S. Supreme Court sets precedent and it says yep. we like search warrants and they're yes. legal and they're easy to get. And guess what? If you execute a search warrant, then it's almost above reproach. Of course, the defense attorney can fight. Hey, it was founded on faulty information or anything else. But guess what? Four corners of the doc document, likelihood, probable cause, all things we've heard before. They had it in this case. And, and Brian, I'm telling you, when, when you decide the when and where, that you're going to make the arrest. It's everything. Uh, should I remind our viewers uh, and listeners of Ruby Ridge? Uh, yeah, should we talk Waco. about Waco? Now, yeah, now Brian, are... those are big picture ones, right? But, but this happens all the time. As relevant, just as relevant. And they're just as relevant. And that's what how many of these big high profile cases where this occurs, same thing. Everyone talks about Breonna Taylor and what happened, but no yep. one talks about, hey, you know, that didn't have to take place at that time and nope. place. Didn't have to. Uh, right. so, that, so they, but this is what we're getting at is everyone so focused on here's the individual event oh he did this at the house he had these weapons stage and maybe if we approach from this angle and then that you're going like you're you're completely missing the flipping point here yes the point is you could arrest that guy like you said when he's going to the store to buy milk and hey, here yep. you go uh, we, we got you Two and have a team away. standing by to execute the search warrant and when they say suspect is in custody now they breach the house do you know, and, and there's never going to be a time, Brian, that you're going to sell me on the fact that breaching a door or doing a dynamic entry is ever going to be easy and it's going to be painless because, the, the, listen, let's can, can we segue into number three and talk about this Florida caper? Because yeah. I'm champing at the bit to talk about the suspect here. So they've got a subject right. that has minor contact with the law almost exclusively through traffic tickets. He has no arrest. He certainly doesn't have a sex arrest. And they built a portfolio of illegal, alleged illegal child pornography and, and things that violated federal and state law. And so they draft an arrest warrant and a search warrant. Now, listen to me. He lived alone in an apartment complex. He'd been previously married, had been separated since 2009, and finally divorced in 2016. He has a couple of kids. He also has a pilot's license. Brian, if we look at our own uh, location association opportunity, one, that's one thing on your yellow pad at home, folks. Then the second thing, sophistication organization access. Low sophistication, okay? He's using a computer to access porn at his home, you know, in the night with his covers on. Um, organization, highly organized guy. You know how hard it is to get a pilot's license? Yeah, you that know takes what I'm a lot of time. Say? And, and yeah. to maintain a marriage and to have kids for as long as he did. And from 2009 to 2016, they were only separated, Brian. They only became divorced recently. So that shows a high level of organization. No domestic violence calls or crimes, right? right. So no run-ins with the law. And he's a flipping pilot. So are you telling me that a pilot is agoraphobic and only stays in his house? Come on, give yeah. me a break for a minute. This guy, everything he's about is his family. And then he has this porn predilection that he can't get rid of for whatever reason. So now let's take him in his house because it's just easier. No, if you take him on the street and he does have a gun, okay? Because it's not common for pedophiles to carry guns or fight right. back or do this kind of stuff. Right. Not, but yeah. if we catch him in neutral territory, natural line of drift, habitual area, okay? 
if he has a handgun, uh, uh, it's, it's likely that you're going to be able to use uh, alternatives that are safe for the public, and maybe the only person that dies is the suspect. But now you get him in his house, he's cued that you're coming, even momentarily, and now he says, well, yeah, I know yeah. I'm going to jail forever. I know that I'm going to be raped or, or manhandled or beaten in jail. Look at what happened to Dahmer. And, and Dahmer was only a cannibal. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Right. We don't like child sex predators. And he says at that moment in that time, not me, not now. Do you get what I'm trying to mm -hmm. say? I'm going to fight back. Shoots through the door. Do you think that he saw the emotional content of what he was doing at that point no no he no. went completely to black brian yeah and he started pulling the trigger and the next thing was i'm going to retreat into my home i'm going to have a cup of coffee then i'm going to blow my brains out that's exactly what happened at that scene now you had experienced veteran officers that were on that team going up to the door and and brian they died and i'm so sad that they died yeah. and i'm not going to play armchair quarterback but i'm going to say let's learn from this situation and pay it for it because you know the pendulum is going to swing right now they're going to say well, on every it, warrant with pedophiles from now on you will, it's going to yeah, be a ram in a body be, bunker right yeah well that and that's the thing that's still that at bang thinking like you, yes. you, we we haven't learned okay we're we, that, that we haven't learned from those i mean you brought Precisely. up major ones that were involved with with uh federal agencies with with ruby ridge and, and waco and that and those were massive massive incidents that were huge but the, like we just said this happens with local agencies all the time and all we the see time. the news where someone gets shot or here and then it becomes this argument of oh, what happened and now we need to do a different entry tactics course to correct this deficiency yep. and then let's get another vehicle to put in here and you're like what what, what are you talking about if the guy walks out to get the paper in the morning that get that's when you get them if they go if they ever leave their home if you have an arrest warrant you can do it so so we get focused in on this okay this is where they're at this is where they live we need to go get them. But you, like you brought it up earlier, and we, we talk about that one in class. Is it's the 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 lions then? You want to walk into the lions then, or you want to wait till he's uh you know laying in the sun out at the tree uh, uh after he just just you know took down a zebra and ate ate enough food to put him to sleep? It's like yeah. this is this is ridiculous. Get them after they're leaving the diner and they got a full belly and they're walking to their car not paying attention. I mean, I mean it's. The, because that, that that's the whole point is 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 your what do you think if i show up to your house dude you knock on my door and it's just a slightly aggressive knock you didn't even mean to dude i'm already i'm already got one hand on my fucking pistol you get what i'm yes. saying i mean it's just you hear that and you're like oh what the hell was that you're instantly go right to red you know what i mean you're, you're so right on so let's Let's compare it at street level to other things that we know that have happened. That's a scientific method is we take a look and see if precedent has been set. There are thousands of cases where a drunk uh, a student from another country came over in a stand with the family and misses the house by one or the apartment by one yeah. and gets gunned down by a yep. frightened homeowner. Yeah. Now there's a language barrier. There's this, there's that, a little bit of alcohol involved. There's other cases where a boyfriend tries to sneak in on the girlfriend and it gets gunned down. All of those are part of the problem set of having a geographic castle that you're mm -hmm. trying to protect, even psychologically. So we have sociologically, wherever you go, you want to protect it. We have mm -hmm. psychologically, your home is your castle, and we want to fight to protect it. And then we have physiologically, the fear that sets in, Brian, the anger yeah. and the fear, okay, all of a sudden we have to deal with these emotions. And now if we have a weapon or they have a weapon, guess what? It's, it's hard to contain that. But now let's slow that down for a minute. There are millions of DUI traffic stops that science could take a look at and study, and you could at home too. On all of those, uh, well, on most of those, when the person is arrested, the car is seized as evidence and, and it's towed. Now, I don't know one caper where the person fought to the death saying, you're not towing my car. Same thing with when it comes yeah. from traffic tickets and all those. And Brian, if there is that one case out there with an emotionally disturbed person that raised to that level, I guarantee you it's a fraction of a fraction of a nano percent of all of them, right? So if we know that that happens every day, if we know that even in a certain bar situation, if somebody yeah. bumps into me, I'm protective on the dance floor proximically, right? Then wouldn't you expect that the uh, uh, danger is heightened when you're going to go into a home, especially for a life felony or especially for a felony here that this guy is going to do hard time and his name is going to be drugged through the mud. Rightly so. Right. Come on. No, I, you it, should have it, expected it. No, no. And, and that that's kind of why I brought we brought up those examples, too. Like, it's like, you know, we, you're I'm not probably not willing to fight to the death to because you're taking my dinner table or something. Yep. Right. But but I am willing to fight. 
Um, so now put okay. me in the home. The same, you get what I'm saying? Like exactly. You, you, so it, let's let's add an emotional weight to that, Brian. Yeah. You're at a soccer game or a football match or a rugby match. You're wearing the face paint. You're wearing the clothes, and you're in the stadium now. You know my brother Jeff. Uh, uh, when the wings played the abs, no matter where they were, Jeff would show up and Jeff would have that helmet. You remember the helmet yeah, with, with the, the, the light, light on top the big, and he'd have the <laughs> uh, uh, big air horn and he would run over from the red wing side to the avalanche side and just blow that in everybody's faces. And they would chase him and tackle him and beat him. Uh, Brian, we do know that sometimes at sporting events, it gets so heated that people are killed. So the idea is if we know that there are certain steps we could do to mitigate that, like Jeff, don't go. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Right. And if you do, don't blast that horn and the flugel horn in people's faces, right? So I don't want to laugh about these coppers that were killed because it hurts my heart. I, it I, does. Know, Brian, we were on the road when I heard it, and, and, right. and I could not believe that here we are trading the lives of two veteran coppers for this ass that didn't yeah. deserve to do what he was doing. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But in his own mind, Brian, he thought he was right. In well, that's that's... Mind, at that last minute at that door, he thought he was doing the right thing. Well, and that gets into they have they have home field advantage, right? You have home it's field certainly. advantage when you're when you're at home, when you're literally at home. You have home field advantage. The longer you're in a spot, that's now your spot. Someone else comes in, they got there later than your your home field advantage. But, but that's that's the point though, Greg. Like it changes the way you think. If I'm sitting uh, uh, at a you know you got those, those places out here, some restaurants where you got like big long tables. So like maybe you and a couple of people are at one end, but then there's other people you don't even know at the other end because there's enough room, right? Well, pre COVID, I guess. But but you know if you're sitting there and I'm here, you and I are having a beer and we're eating some food, and then a, a group comes in and sits down at the end of that table. It's 10, 12 feet away, you know, big long table, but still. I now have advantage. They, they, they typically do what they look, Oh, is anyone sitting here? This is your Precisely. table. I'm sitting down. So, so that th what I'm saying with that is that you want home field advantage. So, so yeah. if, if the, if the guy we're going after, if we're going to go arrest has home field advantage. I want to take that away from him. We can yeah. then have home field advantage. We create our so home simple. field. And, and that's the idea is because now automatically they have to do what they have to respond to whoever has home field advantage. They have to now try and adjust their plan. So, so if you set, you have to set that space, you have to set that tone. You have to figure out where that wants to be, but, but we don't do that, Greg. How is that different? from running a plate, it comes back on the hot sheet. It's a stolen Vic. Uh, the guy driving it is known to you as a su suspect that's wanted and all these other things. And so here come the red and blues. Wait a minute. There are myriad opportunities to wait till that vehicle is penned up in traffic or something. You, you got to do a balancing act, Brian. What's best for the general public? That always comes first, right? Is it legal? Okay, that's tied for what's best for the general public. We don't want to have to kill every suspect that we arrest, even for a felony. And we certainly don't want to trade and say, okay, so the new rule is now two federal agents per pedophile. I mean, Brian, we can't sustain yeah. that. So, yeah. so, so then I'll, I'll take you to your, your uh, king of the domain, the home field advantage one. So uh, I don't tell jokes because I'm horrible at them, but I'll tell you this when a, a guy's walking around with a teenage kid and they open the wrong door while he's showing him some of the, uh, you know, accoutrement of the apartment and they open a door and two people are making love and the, Kid looks surprised, you know, he's teenage, he's probably seen it before, but the guy looks at him and he goes, hey, what's uh, going on in there? And he goes, hey, guy's riding a bicycle, you know, trying to de-escalate a little bit. And all of a sudden, kid pulls, a, kid pulls out a gat and blasts both of the people in bed. And he looks at the guy and he goes, he's riding my bicycle. So the idea is territorial, human beings respond with violence when all of a sudden they're faced with embarrassment or emotions that they can't regulate. And right. anger goes to rage. And when anger goes to rage, you, can't, you yeah. have to find an outlet for that rage because you it will not it dissipate somewhere. With, yeah. It has to. It has to go. Anger. Look, I get angry every day. I'm I'm pissed now. I don't even know why. You get what I'm <laughs> yeah, trying to no, say? It's an emotional <laughs> roller coaster in this big head. Yeah. But I want you to imagine that him standing at the door, for whatever reason, his chime, uh, door ring, whatever those things are called, mm -hmm. says, hey, someone's here. You know, yeah. uh, you rang. Uh, he peeks out, sees the feds. Now, he knows immediately. He's not thinking this is the wrong house. Right. He knows immediately, oh, my God, all that stuff on my computers. Does he try to talk it out? No, he's in his home. He's got his back up against the wall, Brian. Okay, so now he's that ravenous beast, which feeds right into your territorial response. He is going to fight like a badger, like a flipping honey badger, 
which is exactly what he did. I well, think there was myriad ways to approach this other than go in the front door. Well, what, that's what I'm saying is one of the things people will do is go, well, you know, it's easy to say that now, but like you couldn't predict that that was going to happen. And, and you're going, you, you can predict it as a possible outcome, yes. right? Okay. Here's one thing that likely. may occur. Likely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Likely. Here's a likely outcome. I am outcome. the likelihood scape. But here's the thing, Greg, you then have to sit there and do the cost benefit analysis and go, okay, if this were to happen, is it worth this? Is it worth if, going? And it almost never is. Like you get them sometimes say, it is. Okay, yeah, but so rarely. You've got a kid, and this guy okay. is a known pedophile, it's, it's, and the kid's in the back room, and you think if I, I don't I get act it. now, he's gonna kill. I get it. Okay, but that's, but, a, that's the problem. It's the Jack Bauer, it's the 24, it's the ticking exactly. clock. No, there is no fucking ticking clock. So, you got time. So you have to you have to train coppers, you have to train prosecutors, you have to train judges that we have to slow down. We uh, uh, give the gift of time and distance, Brian. We choose when events occur. When we're in charge of the operational tempo of an event, we're much more likely to live through it and not have a severe consequence like they had in this situation. And right now, some Fed is F uh, MFing us going, yeah, well, you don't know. It's like, well, first of all, pal, back off. We do. Been there our whole careers. Second yeah. of all, you have to understand that unless there's a, for example, Brian, here's another one that, that's realistic, not a Jack Bauer, potential destruction of evidence. Okay. We have to hit with a no-knock, which is always dangerous because we don't want the person to have time to destroy the evidence. Well, there's another great case for well, let's that, wait till the person's wait till at the leaves. mall. That's what I'm and when like, he's sitting down trying on his new shoes, right? You walk up and you say, Yahtzee, I, I'm with you on this one. And I just don't see the other side. Well, I, I, it gets into that mentality of, okay, we got our guy. We have to get him. We've got our case. We got to go arrest him. It's, it's just, oh, it, it, this is the problem when we say, you know, we keep thinking at bang where everyone again is going to change. Well, maybe we should do that at night now under nods and we'll sneak in through a window. You're like, you, you don't. What are you doing? Like, what, yeah. what, <clears throat> what reason do you have to go in there right now to get this guy? I mean, this isn't the he's walking through a, a, a you know a movie theater full of people killing, and you got to, dude, it's it, the time, and you got to get in there and you got to stop Hammer it. As fast as you time. can't like right. that's that's there's there's so few of those incidences when they do occur, they're so blatantly obvious that it's time to just go and start hitting and and start shooting, moving, and communicating. But that doesn't have that that this is rare. This isn't this isn't combat overseas. This is in the United States. So you, you, like we, we, I mean, I, I don't see it, it. It feels so shitty seeing yes. that story because it wasn't worth those two FBI agents' lives. And, well, and so, it's so horrible. let's approach it from there. It's horrible, Greg. They didn't. They should be alive today. You let's know? go back to sociological and psychological, Brian. So conduct this mental exercise with me. We now have all of those agents in a room. And it's well before we, you know, we have the warrants because warrants not going to expire until the date on the warrant says you must do it within 14 days right, with the return right, or whatever. Right. So I have you in the room and I say the following, Hey, listen, uh, I'm not going on the raid. I just want to come in and, and uh, discuss it with you because I'm your chief supervisor or whatever. I'm the SWAT team supervisor. Hey, listen, uh, what if this goes sideways and this guy's got a AR behind the door and he decides to, uh, you know, blast through the front door. Are we ready for that contingency? And then the guy goes, well, we'll have the SWAT team. We'll do the stand down with that. Okay, how far was the body bunker? How far was the ramp? The female was killed instantly. The other guy returned fire, but he died. So, so here we are talking about heroes after the fact from bang and to the right of bang, rather than sitting in that room in a clear light of day when nobody's under pressure and say, I want you to consider that we may have a, a, a death today. We may have to kill this guy. We may have to die. Have the prosecutor in the room and go around the room and go, yeah, but we've done this before. And we have a high likelihood of success on this one. And then say, okay, why? Sell me on it. Well, because this guy has never fought and he's there. Okay, well, what if he turns the other way? What are we going to do? Brian, that role-playing exercise that would have taken 15 minutes is not a what-if game. It's not a, it's a likelihood game. And that likelihood game in this situation would have saved some lives. I, I feel it. That, that's my opinion. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I don't, I think because they become routine and part of the reason why it's always been done this way. And, you know, it does become, Oh, well, like you, like you already gave evidence. Well, he's never had anything more than a traffic violation. Yep. He's never had anything. He's never had these domestic violence issues. He's never shown any of this. And, and so everyone goes, okay, it's just a routine thing. We'll go in and get him. But, but that's the problem is that it, that's, that's the whole point is we're making is why is that the routine? Why yes. is the routine to walk into the lion's den and throw some flashbangs in there? 
there or not just try to walk in there and talk like what what is the point of this like it's just it's just absolutely not worth it it's it's not there there was no impending you know uh there you know there's no exigent circumstances that would require you to may immediately walk in there and and shoot the place up or do whatever you have to do like yeah. yeah i mean it just it blows my mind that this continues to happen and well, and and what, what's the answer well let's get a new shield and a new we'll truck talk about that and and so, we go to toys let's go buy some more toys brian brian folks just shared with you uh the knowledge of of uh search warrants the laws of evidence the rules of evidence uh uh by saying exigency and he said emergency earlier so th those are two uh, 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 recognized exceptions to the search warrant rule uh, that go all the way up to the, the uh, U.S. Supreme Court on numerous cases. So that becomes case law, which becomes a law of the land. Yep. So if we take a look at those only, was this a situation? Check in the box, Brian. Yes, no. Then the next thing is, uh, is there a high likelihood that if this goes sideways, somebody's going to get hurt or killed? Yes or no. Is there another place we can execute it? that has a higher likelihood of success with a lower likelihood of potential violence. And then you're gonna get some young or old copper that's gonna yell, hey, we're cops, we got the tens, let's go get this guy. And you gotta stop that bravado. That bravado, hey, Brian, uh, that bravado will get you killed on the I streets know. of Chicago and Detroit, yeah, but it'll get you killed in combat too. Yes. You know, when you're not yeah. checking your five and 25, yeah. when you dismount, and I you wanna this. be the first. That's hey? a classic, we got this. Yep. No, you, you, you do not got this. You do not got this, you know, and, and I'm telling you, part of it too, Brian, is that we don't study the psych psychology of offenders deeply enough. For example, uh, you said uh, 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 earlier about this guy being very organized, and then I mentioned the scale of, uh, of uh, right. uh, organization and access. Let's talk about uh, sophistication, low sophistication, just like the copper's entry, high level of organization, just like the cop's entry. So they're equal there. Who owns access? Coppers say we're going to force access. Yeah. Okay. Home field advantage advantage means you're going to deny access. So right there, you have scientific levels of friction. So what do we know? What comes from friction uh, geographically? If you have tectonic plates that shift, Brian, right. we have an earthquake. We, we might have Dante's Peak. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I watched that at three o'clock in the morning. So that was in my mind. Did you know that uh, uh, the female from the Terminator can't think of her name right now? You know, she's got a twin sister. Didn't know that, uh, but I don't know where I'm going with that <laughs> argument. But listen, that friction can create a pearl. That friction in the earth can create a diamond. diamond so right. anytime that you have it, you got to look at likelihood, Brian, and go, that pressure is going to go somewhere. And that guy internally, when he went internal, Brian, he turned into a killing machine. And he was a good, efficient and killer. As most people do, especially yep. in that situation, right? Especially with where there is no outward signs of, of violence. So they, yep. they don't go outward, they go internal. Right. So they go internal. So maybe he, you know, okay, he, look, he, you're getting into the, the psychology of the offender. And I would say that is studied. And I think it's done incorrectly. Yes. And it's done in terms of, I, look, it's not that that information gleaned from people who study those offenders is not operationalized. Well, I'll, I'll put it that way. That's I mean, a great way not, of saying it. And it's certainly not uh, taken by law enforcement. Uh, uh, and studied and rehearsed. I'll, I'll tell you that. Well, so, that's what I'm saying. It's not put yep. into something. Hey, what we know from him? Oh, well, he enjoys uh, that. You know, it always comes down to some <laughs> horrible, crappy thing that about the person that we can't use. That information is useless right, to me. But going on there, I, I just think that you should back up to the original point too, uh, real quick, because that point was well made, and I don't want our scientists in the audience to miss it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. You take a look at, uh, I don't like Mondays. Uh, yeah, and, and Brenda, Brenda and Spen Brenda Brenda Spencer. Brenda so, and Spencer. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and listen, everything that I've read about Brenda Spencer since the incident wants to dissect Brenda Spencer and that Christmas gift she never got. And yeah. the two showed the uh, two toed thong that she wore to swimming that rubbed her the wrong way. And she told daddy, I'm going to kill. Okay. All of that horse crap, that's what I'm talking about operationalizing first in the scientific community, Brian. So first, the scientific community should say, here's the psychological profile of the offender. So don't get the gremlin wet after midnight. Don't feed yes. it. You know, don't do that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So I would like that. First, that's the first failure. Second is the chief of police of an organization isn't reaching out to the, the psychology community and saying, hey, listen, could you come in and give a course once a year on the psychology of an offender, how we can break that down? Detectives learn from other detectives, Brian, and that's what hands this 
uh, uh, bad institutional knowledge right, right down the pike. Hey, we're going to go get that guy. We're going to boot the door. Well, SWAT and, team's going to be on hand. And you only know from from your experience, right? So we know, yes. hey, anytime I've dealt with something like this before, it's always gone this way. Yes. Well, that doesn't mean it is this time or there's some other confound in there or there's some other contributing factor that you didn't see, right? And and th- yep. this is with all of them why we when we when we do this in real time prior to an event, we take into account all of these things and it's a question game. Okay, well, it's the what if game, but it's not the made up, you know, stupid ones that everyone gets into. It's let's yep. realistically see what they can, what what this person has access to. Uh, are you trying to create access? Are they going to then try and deny you access? If they're going to deny you access, how are they going to try and do that? You know, I mean, there's all these different things that, that you can get into, but, but I mean, I, it just comes down to that. Why go into the freaking lion's den and do this every time? Like that's always our mentality. And 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 I know part of it, you know, in, with military stuff, it's like, hey, we got a bad guy, we got to go in there and get him. Well, can we send a missile? No, because it's in a village next to a mm-hmm. school. Okay, so we actually have to send people. Is this? Can we send a it? robot? Well, yeah. Is this is right? this worth? So so you're telling me this person is now worth a the loss of life from a tier one military unit or something? And yeah, that decision's made. Yes, meaning there's there's casualties it's combat so there's automatically we know people are going to get hurt let's mit or die let's mitigate it the best that we can well that's different than these situations it's it really not, is it, we do not have to look at it like that it's it's how do we do this so that absolutely no one gets hurt you know what i'm saying so, and that, so that's the idea you're, you're you're so right on and and let me tell you what i feel i feel that unwittingly these feds have assigned their names forever to the wrong uh, type of thing. So, and let me be clear about this. I'm not uh, disparaging their names. I'm saying that somewhere right now, somebody's drafting up legislature because if this guy didn't have an extended tubular magazine on his right. weapon system, or they somebody else, yeah. yep, and somebody else is is changing policy and saying from now on, when we execute this, the the Land Rover has to be on there and we have to cordon off. You know, Brian. We don't have to do a knee-jerk reaction here. What we have to do is we have to say, what's the proximate cause, okay, of these officers being killed? And, and, and then the, the very yeah, first proximate yeah. cause is, hey, it's a suspect. Yeah, but I mean, let's go through a detailed analysis. Brian, if we do a high-risk entry, the words high risk on its own give a higher likelihood that there's going to be danger or violence. So that's where I would say we have to send it back. You know, the remember, what, what did they call that in the movie, the zombie movie, the 13th man or something, where if, if everybody is unanimous, they have to send it, you know, to somebody yeah. that goes exactly off the thing. They have to fight I, for the I'm opposite. advising yeah. you to do something like that. Yeah. Why don't you sit down and discuss it and say, what's the worst case scenario here? And are my officers worth this guy getting prosecuted? Because he's going to go to jail. It's just not right now. I think picking that time and place is important. And and that's what you just said. If you have, you know, at at that point when you have the FBI involved in this, which means that it's been not just a violation, it's been a federal crime has been committed and they have overwhelming amounts of evidence because they don't go. I mean, the one thing that they do is they don't go put cuffs on people unless they're, they are in their own mind, 100% confident that they're going to, that they're going to get, get a conviction at trial right best in the world at making a case you know that and yeah, I know yeah that. they're there when it comes to those details yeah when it comes to that kind of their accountants and lawyers like that's what they yes. do they build a case like that's why everyone's like oh when's this federal investigation like uh, give, give it time you know, oh it's going on a year that means there's a lot going on in there you know what i mean like yep. whatever that that is and, and they build that case so it's like you know you have them you have him it's in the bag the work's been done now you just have to go get him why isn't that the safest thing possible for him? You know what I'm saying? Why can't that that be the, it's just, it's just not, I just, I I keep, it's another time when I see someone die that didn't have to die. And that really fucking, it's, it just really gets me. It really does. I'm emotional too. It really does. Like it's, let let me me throw a monkey wrench into your argument, Brian. Okay. Let me throw a monkey wrench into your argument. You remember the last time a bunch of feds died in Florida. Okay. And what happened after they died in that bank robbery where the tactics they used they were outgunned by tactics. They but said, they said, we are outgunned by bad guys. So let's do this. Let's change let's go the get a, guns that let's, we carry. Let's get a larger caliber bullet. Okay. And that's hence, hence, the, hence the introduction of the 40 cal into the federal law enforcement community. Yeah, how'd that go, Brian? Do you see what happen. I'm trying to say? Let, let's go back and look at that incident. And, and by the way, uh, folks, it's free. Go on our site. I did a lesson to learn about it. Yeah. But when you break down that incident, Brian, what happened is tactics failed. And when tactics fail, humans die. 
The other thing is you can break contact, but you can't break contact when there's a dead and a dying agent that's on the front steps. That's at bang thinking. So I think what I'm hearing you say, and, and what I love you for, because your emotion uh, is well placed here, sir. I think what you're saying is at bang thinking is too late in the game. And that once you do it, you can't unring the bell. Yeah, that's absolutely it. I mean, that, and that's you. And then now you're the, the, unintended consequences, the second and third order effects are what, what then changes policy um, and not always for the better. I mean, you, you pick the wrong thing. Okay, let's get a different caliber. Okay, you know what? It's because he had access to this weapon. That's why it's like, or, or yep. he had, you know, we come up with, I mean, whatever the issue is, you know, I, I it just, and we, we attach a new policy or procedure that then affects things down the road it, it, and, and generally has negative unintended consequences. And, and, that, and that's the issue with this is, is cr getting the, the, the lessons learned here isn't, you, you, we have to change the a simple policies and procedural change on how you, how you take someone into custody, Greg. I, I mean, yes. what, 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 how that's not hard to do that. No, that's not, not some, that doesn't cost money. That doesn't, you don't need funding for that. You don't need to change. You don't affect anyone else's rights in fact you just make it safer for, for, yeah yeah exactly you're, you're actually yep. protecting uh you know god forbid this happened and the guy had no idea it was the wrong guy uh he didn't do anything wrong he didn't know it was the feds imagine if that was a situation so so you, you, you now it, and then he's dead and then they're dead and it's all for for nothing you know yep. whereas if you had these policies and procedures and then you arrested him safely and then went oh crap we got the wrong guy my bad no harm no foul no one died i mean i mean that's that's the whole thing i mean you look at yeah, so, so what what's best served for justice so so brian let me show you a conundrum that our, that our viewers and readers at their long time uh, probably understand. So you send a copper in front of a fleeing vehicle yeah. uh, on a property crime and uh, they put out the stop sticks, but the vehicle's going 70, the driver's in black uh, and runs over the copper. Now you get a dead cop. So the idea behind the felony murder rule, which is adopted by almost all of the 50 states, right. says that because that was done in the commission of a felony, uh, that now the driver is as guilty as the principal, and that he is now charged with the murder of that officer that went out there. And, and you know who's not named on that lawsuit, Brian? The vicarious got names that need to be there, which is the chief of police that said it's okay to get out in front of a fleeing vehicle and throw those stop sticks. And right now, a chief of police is MF and me saying he was behind a guardrail and he was this and he was that. Yeah, dude, dude, it, yeah. It's not safe behind that guy. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Following yeah, him in a pursuit you're officer's right. No, killed. you're right. Yeah. So, so now you're going to escalate that by putting him in front of him? Come on. You know, Stevie Wonder call. This this is the wrong thing at the wrong time, Brian. And, and police agencies, if we want to talk about uh, uh, re-educating law enforcement, this is the time and the place to do these things uh, uh, to make it safer for cops and for the citizens and better for the law. No, I, I, I agree. So you have more... Uh, I'll, 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 de I'll depose you for the following questions, yeah. Greg. Um, Cause you have, you have, you know, de several decades of, of law enforcement experience uh, as well on top of the human behavior and military. I mean, you were, you were a police officer at different agencies for a very long time. I was a so, clown. I was a cowboy. I juggled. Well, I did a lot. Yeah, Brian. you did that too. <laughs> I did a lot. <laughs> yeah, pretty First much. guy with the titanium throw, sphincter. Throw, throw I mean, a there's dollar. a whole lot of things throw, that I'm first. Throw, throw a dollar at me, and you'll you'll be surprised <laughs> at what I'll be <laughs> surprised at what I would do. <laughs> so so uh, no, but but for the for for this is that why do we keep going to that? Why is it always the we need a new tool, we need a new technology, we need a new vehicle? Like why do we pay toys? Well, but but you know and. And even all these lessons learned, you have all these people saying, yeah, we should have done it differently. Yeah, we should have done it differently. And yet yeah. I, I think sometimes we think it changes, but we still continue doing the same thing just in a different manner, right? Why is it still that, that at bang thinking? We're both subject matter experts in marriage. Uh, because we both we both lived through enough of them. I, I, okay. okay, so if so, I were to write it up, yes, I could define it that way. I'm certain let's put some licensed you know, marriage therapists would probably yes. say otherwise. But So I'm going to depose you right back. Um, I've never, uh, in my 59 years of life on this planet, run into somebody that talked about their divorce and said, it was me. I was an <laughs> asshole. I never listened. I didn't do anything. Do you get what I'm trying to I say? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So then after yeah. a fight, when you see a big name fight that I lose money on in Vegas, because I love the pugilist, I love boxing, you know, I love the pure sports. And uh, 
you don't see the other ring come up and go, hey, uh, we, he was just out punched. I mean, this this other guy was in better shape. He was better prepared. You know, it's always, hey, I want to rematch because you don't understand that in the third. Okay, we're humans. Yeah. Humans have stress fractures fragile, and faults and fragile cracks. Fragile ecosystems. And, uh, yes, and we have dimples and warts and fragile ecosystems. So the idea of me coming into a room and going, hey, let's start from the premise that I don't know anything. And then let's build on that. I'm not going to get a lot of work. And I'm not going to get promoted. As a matter of fact, we in America specifically like to promote sociopaths. We like to promote those people whose psychopathy is a predator, uh, uh, not a follower, Brian. Yeah, uh, now, I'm not saying that those people are out there killing and raping, but no. I'm saying that they're devious minded and they want to move ahead. Hell, look at Washington right now. They're yeah. still struggling with it. Oh my gosh. Jesus. You know, look how far this uh, 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 sociopath got. And that's, I'm saying that is a good thing because he said, I'm going to upend the apple cart. And he certainly did that. Okay. Whether you agree with that or not, that guy lived up to his expectations. And guess what, Brian? We should have looked at the history on that guy. What well, did he do that, before that? Was he a, a long life in how, politics? Yeah, you know, he was exactly. a showman. It was P.T. Barnum. How did, how did you, how did, what did you think was going to happen? How, how did was, you elect P.T. Barnum? Is everything, how is everything a surprise when it comes out of his mouth, when it's the most predictable thing ever? And The and, most predictable thing. And you got angry and you got excited when you put P.T. Barnum in, in the White House and you walked in and it was a three-ring circus. Yeah, what, my did, ass in what, what did you think? Come on. So, well, yeah, no, I, and then that that now continues that that cycle where there now it's it's just all these everyone's coming out of the woodwork and getting elected. But but anyway, um, getting elected on what though? Finish that statement. On, getting elected on, on, on junk science. On clickbait. The, they, they are they are getting elected on junk science, saying yeah. it was this administration's fault. It was this man's fault. We well, can go back to this human being. That's that's Stop. classic. It's, that's classic. Life politics. is much you more just, like Wall Street, Brian. Just, Do you get what I'm saying? Continue it's to in blame. valleys. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But but I, I and I get that. But um, no, I mean, I guess I saw I saw that in, in the military with stuff, too, where you're like, how do you not see where this is going? Or look at the yep. look at this unit before the deployment, Greg, before the deployment, you're going, hey, there's a lot going on here. And then, oh, wow, they go on deployment. And next thing you know, they're all over the news for something crazy that they did. And that happened. You're okay. going like, dude, it was it was right there in the room when before they even left. How did you not see this going on? So, so, so you hit something right on the head. So uh, Jesus was betrayed by an insider threat. Yes. So insider threats have been around. So when I sold the insider threat program to the military to save lives on both sides, you get what I'm trying to say? The one thing they said is, well, can you show me precedent? So I handed them a Bible. They go, that's smart. Can you show me more precedents? Brian, what happened when the Brits were pulling out of Afghanistan? Do you get what I'm trying yeah. to say? They were hit all the way till the day that they left. So yep. you can expect this uh, uh, ever increasing uh, landslide of violence. And it's going to be done by what happened to the Brits. It was going to be done by an insider threat. So then once we identify that it has historical perspective, Brian, now it's information science to say what's the likelihood. And guess what? Good information science leads to intelligence, Brian. And now we can turn well, that into operational intelligence, which yeah. can save lives. Well, it's better decision-making, right? You have to have a pure piece of information, ask those questions to make those informed decisions. And, yep. and I think this, this is what we're getting at is you just brought up information theory and decision theory and learning yep. theory and all of those different ideas. But that that's the point is we don't look into that and we don't study that. And, and I think- well, we do, you're well, exactly right, but not enough do. It, and it's, I think, we forget sometimes because we're so down in the minutia of everyday life of just everything, even in your job, especially in your job. But so speak to the, to the Florida incident with the federal law enforcement officers. And I'm sure there was, you know, local state and County, whatever there as well as part of this investigation and task force yep. and all that stuff, right. Is that, you know, we're so focused on those minute details is we don't take that time to realize like, Hey, we can, we can do things that when we want to do them. Yep. We can we can manipulate this situation so that it happens when we want it to, not when that suspect wants it to, not when, yes. they, you know what I mean? Like, that's the whole point is that it, it's taking that advantage, that home field advantage, so to speak, to go with the with the topic du jour. But but that's the idea is you you can't. But that, that's the same thing. Dude, when I talk to McKaylee about something that's bothering us, we're having an argument like, you know what, I think right now probably not the best time she's super busy with this that and the other thing so you know what i'm gonna hold off i'm gonna yes. wait 
couple hours and then have that. And then I guess how it's going to go. It's going to go much better. But, but that's the whole point is that we get so focused in the minute right now that we don't take the time to sit back and, and go, uh, you know what, maybe it's this. I actually just read uh, um, the guy, uh, George uh, uh, Schultz died. He was uh, like secretary of state under like Reagan, yeah. you know, and he's a hundred years old or something. He said he was famous for, he had this uh, one hour out of his day or was we, I don't know when, how often he did it, where he shut the door to his office only two people were allowed to interrupt him, his wife or the president. That was it. He said, no one else can interrupt this hour. That's and he so sat cool. there with a pad of paper and just doodled and thought and did nothing, didn't focus on anything. And that's what he it was during one of those sessions where he went, you know what? I actually think we got to, this Gorbachev guy is, is serious and he actually is trying to, re, you know, reform the Soviet Union because everything up to that point was like, yeah, it's another bunch of BS. It's none of this. And then he sat there during one of those hour times and went, hey, you know what? Damn it, we're doing this wrong. And then change the policy. The point is, what did he do? Gave himself the gift of time and distance. Took an hour out of the day to go, hey, is this the right time to execute this policy? And, and that's what we're talking about right here, whether it's You're in exactly personal right. life or, or, or so, professional life. I think it's the same thing. It's just we, we, get, we get so focused on the minutia. So, so you're, you're right again. So let's do this, Brian. Let's, let's uh, uh, rely on the word of SMEs. Let's rely on the word of law. Let's rely on the word of science, things that we've learned historically that we can uh, support and defend then let's take a look at historical perspective. So uh, uh, we're, we're in Nashville with the, the first part of this caper with the, the, the kid getting gunned down. So let's look back at the Nashville bomber. We recently had some talks and arguments with different people about it. And when I say arguments, I mean open discourse arguments where yeah. people disagreed with uh, your, your opinion. But my legal opinion is if you take a look back at uh, uh, Bloody Sunday, the IRA was doing an attack uh, after that. They tried to get six uh, car bombs um, yep. into the UK uh, from Ireland uh, to England. Uh, they only got four through. Of the four that they got through, they parked them at different locations and learning the lesson that if you turn the public against you, you're never, ever going to get them back. Yep. What they did is they started announcing from pre-recorded messages in each one of the bombs an hour before that, hey, listen, get out of there. This is a car bomb. It's going to detonate. They warned everybody. OK, now, where did we see that repeated recently around the yeah. holidays? And then somebody comes up and says, oh, their intimate knowledge of, uh, you know, the phone company and this. Brian, did you ever drive by that AT&T building in Nashville? We both did. It's yep. huge. The other yep. thing is you don't have to look very far. It's the one with a bunch of antennas on it. Maybe that's critical infrastructure. And, and massive cooling towers on top. Like, okay. you, know, you just, it doesn't and now, take much to you, figure it out. If you made the announcement, get away, this is a bomb, and you remained in the vehicle, Brian, sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, and sometimes a suicide is just a suicide. I'm just saying, this could have been predicted at bang, gives you no uh, green, it gives you no freedom of time and distance. And if you don't understand the overarching necessity of left of bang thinking, don't go and buy the book, call the experts, uh, we'll come yeah. to your place and show you. And I, I think that's uh, the, the, you know, you, you talk about the time and distance and that, well, that's what I, I think another way to describe that is what we're calling this one, the home field advantage. So you You're right. always Spot want on. home field advantage. So if you don't have it, you can create it, right? And, and it, look, that's, if you're setting up a sting somewhere, you're setting up it, it, that that's now your home field. You set it up at the location you wanted at the time sure. you wanted and you got them to come here. So you have the advantage. That's the point, right? It is that that's what de-escalation means. De-escalation yep. means not booting in the door at 3 a.m. and and trying to shoot it out with someone who who isn't. I, I, it's just it, every time one of these happens, it's like I, I, this is so yeah, easy. And, and let's be fair, Brian. There, there's a hundred or a thousand that happen in between these critical incidents, yep. but it's not fair to put them on the teeter totter together. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I see what you you're you can't measure you can't, a, yeah. a win against a catastrophic loss mm -hmm. and, and make sense of that math. That that's an algorithm do, that doesn't work, Brian. All right. Um, well, I think that's kind of a, a, a decent place to, to end on, Greg. Do you have a, anything else uh, to add to that? I just, I, I don't want to be beating that uh, dead horse. I'm going to get letters on that comment even. I just thought about it when I said it. But Brian, this is a function of training. Uh, training uh, and in some parts education that are going to make us stronger, smarter, harder to kill. That's, that's my opinion. All right. Well, yep. On that note, hey, don't forget to check out our Patreon. we got extra stuff on there and more coming. Uh, Check us out on social media. Follow us along. If you enjoyed the podcast, please uh, share it with your friends. Hit up the review at the bottom of it. It, it helps kind of spread, spread the message a little bit. So thanks for everyone for tuning in. And don't forget that training changes behavior.